Thank you for joining us for another edition of Dvar Malchus. If you enjoy these shiurim, please log in to shabbosalsalei.org where you can make a donation to support this program. Today's shiur is dedicated to the referral shlema of Ariel David Ben Simcha. May it be speedily and immediately. We're at Parsha Vayachi, page 371. This is from the third day of the week, and uh, which was the 10th of Tavas, and the 14th of Tavas from 5752 Lubavitch Rebbe. Here we go. Parsha's Vayachi is a culmination of the first book, first also in virtue of the five books of the Torah, the book of Reishis, also an idiom of Rosh Head, which is called Sefer Hayashar, book of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, who are called Yesharim, upright. And the actions of the forefathers are a sign for the children, which acts as instruction and empowerment for the general service of the children, all the Jewish people, which begins with the following Chumash. And these are Shamos, names, the children of Yisrael, Yaakov, and continues through the four books after this, and all the 24 sacred books of the Torah, Prophet, and writing, culminating with Devar Ha'ayim, Ha'ayim, the history of the Jewish people of all generations, and emphasized in the name and content of the Parsha with which we conclude the first book of the Torah. The name of the Parsha, Vayachi Yaakov, and, Vayachi, and Yaakov lived, and since Yaakov is the choicest of the forefathers, the life of Yaakov is the essence of Sefer Hayashar, the book of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And through him, all matters of the forefathers that are in Sefer Hayashar are drawn forth to all the Jewish people. And the drawing forth itself is a manner of Yashar, an upright. They will see his face to the extent that the state of Ayahi Yaakov becomes the state of all the Jewish people throughout all generations. And the content of the Parsha and the blessing of Yaakov to his children. Before this, all the blessings of the children of Yosef, Ephraim and Manasseh will be like Reuven and Shimon, draw forth bracha, blessing, an idiom of marich, meaning draw forth the matters of Yaakov to all his children, the twelve tribes, which include all the Jewish people for all time and all generations. And in the wording of our sages, Yaakov, our forefather, did not die. Just as our children are alive, so too is he alive. And the life of Yaakov is eternal life through it being drawn to his children and his children's children for all generation. His children are alive, true life, through studying and fulfilling Torah. Our life and our length of days, the concept of Yaakov, as it says, and he established a testimony in Yaakov and a Torah he placed in Yisrael. And at the end of the reading of the Parsha Fayahi, with which we conclude the first book of the Torah, we announce strong, strong, and be strengthened as a Jewish custom that Fayahi Yaakov is the strength of the service of the Jewish people throughout all generation. And based on what is known that the Torah portions have a special connection to the times in which we read these Parshas, we may explain also the connection of Parsha Fayahi, the culmination of the first book of the Torah, Sefer Yatsar, Yahai Sefer, Hayashar, which in an empowerment and strength for the service of the Jewish people of all generations to the 10th of Tevis, especially in the calendar layout of this year, the 10th of Tevis occurs on the third day of the week of the Parshas Vayechi, hence the holy Shabbos of Parshas Vayechi, upon which the elevation and completion of the 10th of Tevis is accomplished in the 14th day of Tevis and the ushering of the 15th of Tevis that begins in the Mincha of Shabbos upon which the moon of the month of Tevis is complete, full, including and especially the completeness of the 10th of Tevis as we will explain. And by way of preference, the explanation, unique quality of the 10th of Tevis. The 10th of Tevis, one of four fast days which are rabbinically obligated, has a stringency surpassing other fast days even in comparison to Tisha Ba'av, which is night is like its day, unlike other rabbinic fasts, which only in the day and not in the night, similar to the fast of Yom Kippur, which is a biblical obligation, that even if it were to occur on Shabbos, in the time that they will sanctify the moon based on the seeing a new moon, including for some time after the destruction of the base of Midash, when there was still a base based in Samhu, who were sanctifying it based on seeing a new moon, they would not be able to postpone it to a different day because regarding it, regarding 
it, the verse says, on this very day, just like regarding Yom Kippur. And may we say the explanation of this, the first the four fast days were established due to four catastrophes that were connected to the destruction which occurred as a series of events, and in the order that they occurred, the tenth of Tevis, the king of Babylon, surrounded Jerusalem and besieged it, and on the seventeenth of Talmud, the walls of Jerusalem were besieged, and the ninth of Av, the first and the second base of Migdash were destroyed, and on the third of Tishrei, Gula ben Achim, was killed and the final call of the Jewish people was exhausted. And since the tenth of Tevis, there was the beginning of the series of events and the destruction of beginning has more strength than the continuation after it and sometimes even more than the culmination of the matter. Therefore, it has a greater severity than all the other fast days which are connected to the continuation and culmination of the destruction. And from this it is understood also regarding the good aspect of the fast days that the tenth of Tevis is the beginning and opening of the good aspect of all the fast days, as we shall explain. So therefore, this, the good aspect, is with advanced vigor and great strength more than other fast days, including also Tisha B'Av, when Mashiach was born, and the beginning of the redemption as the opening of all new matters of holiness. And the explanation of this, a fast day, is, as the verse says, a favorable day for Hashem, as the Alter Rebbe explains in Igeris HaTshuva, that the desired fast day for a favorable day, an auspicious time for Tshuva, through which we eliminate and, dis and the destruction and the exile that we bring redemption, that we Im Im eliminate the destruction and the exile, and we bring the redemption. The Jewish people are redeemed only through tshuva. And Torah already promised that eventually the Jewish people are destined to do, to do tshuva. And immediately they will be redeemed. And this matter, the intention and the fast, namely for tshuva, which eliminates the destruction of the exile and brings the redemption, is emphasized in the 10th of Tevis more than other fast days. When the king of Babylon besieged Jerusalem, it still did not affect Jerusalem itself. The houses in it, and certainly not the main house, the base of Migdash, and not even its walls, which surround and guard Jerusalem, for even the wall was complete, and the king of Babylon remained outside the wall, whereas in the catastrophe after which do them the other fast days were established, only that mere fact that he was able to surround the wall and besiege Jerusalem in a manner that no one can go out and no one can go in which as a result they were not able to bring food into the city, etc., is an undesirable matter to the extent of establishing a fast. And the intention of this catastrophe, a siege on Jerusalem, however, a siege alone, without affecting Jerusalem itself, not even the walls of Jerusalem, was in order to arouse the Jewish people to return with Tshuva immediately, which through this undesirable matter will be eliminated from the beginning and automatically and the continue and automatically the continuation of the undesirable event will not occur. Hence, the tenth of Tevis, there is an emphasis on the auspicious time for the service of Tshuva, which eliminates the destruction and brings the redemption more than other fast days, since it did not have it in any form of destruction in actuality, since indeed also the wall of Jerusalem remained complete, rather only a matter that would arouse Tshuva, which through this Jerusalem and the base of Migdash will remain complete elimination of just of the destruction and may we add additional points in the unique aspect of the tenth of tevis both regarding the beginning of the destruction of the base of migdash and also mainly regarding the beginning of the redemption and the building of the base of migdash regarding the siege of jerusalem on the tenth of tevis we find in the prophecy of ezekiel and you shall take an iron pan and place it in an iron wall between you and the city, and it will be besieged, and it will be a sign for the Jewish people, so Jerusalem will be besieged. And may we say that the iron being the sign for the siege also alludes to the destruction of the base of Migdash, since iron is out of the question for the base of Migdash, as the verse says, and when the house of Hashem will be built, complete stones were used, and hammers and saws and the iron tools were not heard in the house during its construction, being that it associated with the destruction of the base of Migdash, as it says in the Midrash, and this is the donation of gold and silver and copper. However, iron is not written here, not in the Mishkan and not in the base of Migdash. Why? Since Adam, who destroyed the base of Migdash, is compared to it, and the correction of it through iron of holiness. Our sages say, any rabbi that is not hard like an iron is not a rabbi, as it says, a land of of Vanyu, 
literally it's stones or iron. Don't read it Havanua, rather Benua. It's builders, which this is the concept of stubbornness in a good sense and the strength of power, iron and the sense of essence of the soul through which we nullify the iron of negativity, which is the stubbornness of the evil inclination. And this is especially associated with the 10th of Tevis, since the intention of the siege, only a siege without any damage, even if the wall of Jerusalem was an aroused to do tshuva, in order that also the wall of Jerusalem will remain and be complete, as mentioned before, that this is the idea of the service of Hashem, guarding and the completeness of the Torah. I am a wall refers to the Torah. I am a matter of strength and power of iron to holiness. Moreover, and also intention, the goal and goal of the continuation of the events of the siege, including the use of iron and the destruction of the base of Migdash, since they did not do tshuva, is in order that there be the completeness of iron, holiness, in the building of the third base of Migdash. It says in the Midrash that gold, silver, and copper correspond to the three forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Gold referred to Avraham, silver refers to Yitzhak, copper refers to Yaakov. And based on what is known, that also the three base of Migdashes correspond to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. In reference to Avram, it says mountain. In reference to Yaakov, it says field. Yitzhak, rather, it says field. Yaakov, who, who called it house. We say, may say that gold, silver, and copper correspond to the three base of Migdash. Gold corresponds to the first base of Migdash. Silver corresponds to the second base of Migdash. And copper corresponds to the third base of Migdash. And the explanation is this, is that through Yaakov, whose concept is Torah, as mentioned above, also the refinement of copper and the accomplished copper, Necholoshes, is an idiom for Nechash snake, the primordial snake, namely klipa, negatively, which is refined through nechosis, of holiness, which is mainly in the complete sense of the third base of Migdash corresponding to Yaakov. And may we add that nechosis alludes to also the state of time in exile following the destruction of the second base of Migdash, where the completeness of the third base of Migdash is, allude to, is alluded in and refining of the iron of negativity which is even lower than copper, which through this we can reach the completeness of iron of holiness. Gold, silver, and copper are listed in the descending order that gold is the most valuable, silver is lower than gold, and copper lower than silver, and alluded to also in their acronym, Zahava Gold, an acronym for Zehona Esin Bari, the one who is giving is healthy. Kasa Silver, an acronym for Kashayasis, Sakanas Pakad, where there is danger, and Nahosis, an acronym for Nisas Kolal Shamar Tinu, giving to an ill person who says give. And based on this, we may say that gold symbolizes the Mishkan and the first base of Migdash, which was complete, and one giving is healthy, and silver symbolizes the second base of Migdash, which was missing five things. Therefore, there was a fear, maybe again, that there would be an absence of heaven forbid of the entire base of Migdash and copper, which is lower than gold and silver, symbolizes the state of time of exile, which due to the absence of the base of Migdash, the Jewish people are in a state of an ill person that says give, which is the request and demand from Hashem to give. Whoever gives with a good eye, the third base of Migdash, which will be in the height of perfection, even in comparison to the Mishkan and the first base of Migdash, the Migdash, O Hashem, your hands have established, and the building of Hashem, an eternal edifice which will never be destroyed. And may we say that the virtue of the eternity of the third base of Migdash, that after the destruction of the first and second base of Migdash, an eternal base of Migdash will be built, which will not be followed by destruction. It hinted to the strength of the iron of the holiness and the terminology of Kabbalistic and Hasidic teachings. It is known that through the acronym of Bartzel in Bila, and Rachel Zipla Leah, Four wives of Yaakov, who are in the mothers of the twelve tribes, of the opposite them, there are four aspects. The feminine aspect of negativity, as it said regarding Og, his bed is of iron, which is the antithesis of our four matriarchs in the realm of holiness. And to add that also, the order of the four matriarchs, who are hinted in the word Bartzel, Bela for Rachel, and Zipla, 
Zilpa, Zilpa or Leah, maidservants before her midservant, mistress, is in order of negativity when its midservant will inherit her mistress. And may we say there is also in holiness there an order of Barzel, the midservant before her mistress, in a positive sense. And may we say, and may, and by way of preference, regarding the virtue of the matriarchs, surpassing the patriarchs, as it says regarding Abraham, whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her voice. Abraham was secondary to Sarah with regarding to prophecy, similar to state of time to come, for the feminine will transcend the male, and the woman of valor is the crown of her husband, that the sephirot of Malchus will ascend above all the sephirot. What ends up in the action was first in thought, which our patriarchs had a foretaste of this, of the words of our sages. Shem gives three people a taste of the world to come in this world. Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, as it said, Bakol, Mikol, and they had everything. And likewise, regarding the virtue of the mid-servants surpassing the mistresses, Bila before Rachel and Zippa before Leah, it says about Rachel, who gave her mid-servants Bila to Yaakov, and I will build also myself for her. And the matriarchs, are at the level of Machos of Etzilus, and the mid-servants are at the level of Machos as it descends to Bria Yitzir Asiya. And about this it says, the stone that is in the builders despite, the stone that the builders despised became the head cornerstone that the forefathers who built Machos through their marriage with the matriarchs did not want on their own to marry the maidservants since they despised the descent of Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya, the aspects of the mid-servants, nevertheless, specifically through marrying the mid-servants, the level of Malchus, as it descends to Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya, the building and evolution of Malchus at the height of perfection is accomplished. The mid-servants, when she will inherit her mistress, in a good sense, and likewise, we may explain also regarding the base of Migdash, it is explained in the Hasidic discourse why the base of Migdash was made of stone specifically, not like the Mishkan, which was made of cedar wood, to the extent that they do that they did not build it in protruding wood, which whereas covered over wood was the base of Migdash, being that it had in it a foretaste of the perfection of time to come, when the Sephirot of Malchus will be higher than Za, a woman of valor, is a crown of her husband, and therefore it was constructed of stone, an adamant, which corresponds to the separate of Malchus, and not cedar wood, vegetarian, which corresponds to Za'ah, however, not made of iron, which is lower than stone, which corresponds to the separate of Malchus as it descends to Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiya. And may we come to say that in the base of Migdash of the time to come, there will be a manifestation of the virtue of Malchus, not only in its Atzilus, rather also and mainly in its sends to Brigitzir and Asiya, which will be expressed in the strength and power, not only of stone, rather also of iron, which is stronger than stone, a land of Sephirot and Masa, which its stones are iron, similar to the virtue of the mid-servants over, over and above the matriarchs, the completeness of the building and elevation of Malchus, which is called to the acronym of Barzal. And possibly we may say that the perfection of the iron of holiness that is in the third base of Migdash will be not only in the strength of certain, rather also in the fact that it will be built not only from stones, rather also from iron, and that the iron itself will be part of the building of the base of Migdash itself. Iron is not written regarding the Mishkan and the Midrash. Iron is not written regarding the Mishkan and the Mish Migdash since it destroyed the base of Migdash, refers to the first and second base of Migdashes, which were destroyed by iron, whereas in the future, the base of Migdash, the eternal edifice, is not possible to be destroyed. There is no worry of any form of iron in the negative sense, since the time to come, the existence of iron negativity will be nullified, and automatically there can be, can and must be, iron as well used in this building in order to emphasize the virtue and perfection of transforming the iron that destroyed the base of Migdash into iron which becomes part of the building of the base of Migdash. And may we say that what is written in Divrei Ha'amini Ha'yamin regarding the accomplishment of David in preparing everything necessary for the building of the base of Migdash, I prepared for the house of my God the gold for the gold, the silver for the silver, and the copper for the copper, and the iron for the iron, and the iron 100,000 kikars. Its completeness and perfection is in the base of Mingdash of the future, which will be built by King Mashiach, exemplifier of David, that its builder will be 
not only from gold, silver, and copper at the height of perfection, rather also from iron. Based on this, we may say that the concept of the tenth of Tevas is the beginning of the beginning, is the beginning of the building of the future base of Migdash and the future redemption. Although this siege of the tenth of Tevas was the beginning of the catastrophes of the destruction of the base of Migdash, nevertheless, being that the intention in it is that after it and through it the future base of Migdash will be built, an eternal house, indeed the beginning of the catastrophes of the destruction of the base of Migdash is also and mainly the beginning of the future base of Migdash. And this matter is alluded to in the signs that was given for the sage of the tenth of Tevis, that you in the siege for the tenth of Tevis, and you shall take for yourself an iron pan, and you shall place it in an iron wall, a sign for the Jewish people, that the intention and purpose of the beginning of the destruction through iron and negativity is, in order that after the completeness of iron of holiness will be revealed in the future base of Migdash. And this will be appreciated more since the connection of the future redemption is alluded to also in the content of the date of the 10th of Tevis. The month of Tevis is the 10th month. The 10th month is the month of Tevis, counting the months from the month of Nisan, the month of redemption. And in the 10th month itself, the 10th day of the 10th, within the 10th, the 10th shall be holy, which alludes to the perfection of the future redemption in which there will be a completeness of 10 on a 10 string harp, the 10th song, and the tenth red heifer, and the tenth counting of the Jewish people, and likewise regarding Eretz Israel, not only a land of seven nations, but rather of ten nations, this and more, the month of Tevis, including and especially the tenth day in it, is the month that the body has pleasure from the body, and the body, so to say, of above, the essence of Hashem, blessed be he, has pleasure, so to say, from the body of below of each and every Jew, which refers mainly to the state of the time to come, which then the soul receives nourishment from the body. Moreover, the pleasure of the essence of Hashem, so to say, from the body. And with greater emphasis in the calendar layout of this year, that the tenth of Tevis occurs on the third day of the week, upon which that it is good was repeated twice. The second time, double for it is good regarding the creation pastures of grass seeds and produce its kind the tree producing fruit and its seeds are in its kind of its kind that the planting of the seeds include is also the beginning of the sprouting of the fruit and similar to the third day of the week upon which occurs in the tenth of tevis that it is exceedingly emphasized in the calendar layout that the beginning of the destruction and the exile the beginning of the redemption similar to the planting which is included which includes and is the beginning of the sprouting as it is known, that exile is compared to planting. As it is said, I will plant here her in my land for me, which through there, this there is a sprouting in as much great abundance as the words of our sages, a person plants a sea, obviously in order to gather many core, including the ultimate abundant amount to the extent of beyond limits fruit, the fruit of the fruits until the end of the entire world, i.e. forever. And through this, the completeness of good is brought about and revealed that it is good and was repeated on it, and the good of the true and complete redemption in the building of the base of Migdash, the eternal redemption in the eternal base of Migdash, the third redemption the third base of Migdash, as is said, on the third day, he will he lift us up, and we will live before him. Based on this, we may explain also the connection of Parsha Vayechi, the culmination of the first book, the book of the upright, of the Torah, of the strength, strengthen and strengthen and be strengthened for all the books that follow it, being that the culmination of the first book, the Torah, is, is when the Jewish people are situated in the land of Egypt. And Yaakov lived in the land of Egypt, and he was in a coffin in Egypt, which turned into the initial stage of the exile, as emphasized in the continuation of the book of Shemos, which we read, which we read in Mincha of Shabbos Parshas Vayechi, and these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt, and it is continuation with the beginning of the servitude of Egypt after Yosef passes away, and he is placed in a coffin in Egypt. There is a need for strength for all time of exile, including for the ascent from exile to the redemption, and in the language of our sages, Reuben and Shimon descended. Reuben and Shimon went out that the descent of the exile in order so that there should be an ascent of the redemption, as it says at the conclusion and end of the 24 books, Hashem and the God of Hashem, the God of the heavens, command me to build for him a house in Jerusalem. Who among you, anyone from his whole, from his whole nation, may Hashem be with him and ascend. The ascent from exile to redemption to build an even greater base of Migdash, as it is written, the honor 
of this house will be greater than the final one, referring also and to mainly to the third base of Migdash. And the content of the strength of the whole time of exile is, and Yaakov lived, Yaakov, whose realm is Torah. He is the middle path, the innermost pole that reaches from one end to the other, from the highest level until the lowest level, namely that it draws forth the descents and descends below, just as it is above with no change. And through this, the strength of his existence is revealed, a true existence. Give truth to Yaakov and the Eternal One. Yaakov, our forefather, did not pass away, and therefore from him and through him strength is drawn to all Jewish people for the whole duration of exile, that even when they descend into the exile, they experience a state of Yaakov live, true life, according to Torah, which in this emphasized the true strength and eternity of the Jewish people, as it is revealed in the virtue and completeness of the true and complete redemption, an eternal redemption and an eternal base of Migdash connected to the third of the forefathers, Yaakov, and more in detail, the strength for the whole duration of exile until the true and complete redemption is accomplished through his children or lives, since the eternity of Yaakov is emphasized and revealed in his children, the continuation and enduring of his children's children and children for all generations to come in them, conducting themselves in a matter of alive in their daily life in the ways of Yaakov, and through this the eternity of the future redemption and future base of Migdash correspond to Yaakov is revealed in actuality, and this matter is emphasized in the continuation of the Parsha. And Yisrael Yaakov bowed at the, his, at the head of his bed because his bed was complete and his blessing to all his twelve tribes, and he blessed them, implying all of them, that in the completeness of the twelve tribes, which include the Jewish people, the eternal life of Yaakov, and Yaakov lived, continues, and is revealed for all generations to come, which by this power we leave and ascend from exile to eternal redemption. And may we say that the wording saro, literally his seed children are alive, includes to the fact that the exile is categorized as planting, which includes the acts as the beginning of the sprouting of the redemption. And this is the content of the strength of the whole duration of exile. For we know that the sprouting of the redemption is accomplished through the planting of, the, of our seeds in service through the time of exile. And based on the connection of the Parsha of Bayahi with the tenth of Tevis is understood since in the tenth of Tevis it's emphasized that the beginning of the destruction of the exile, the beginning of the destruction and the exile with the siege of Jerusalem is the beginning of the building of the future base of Migdash having eternal strength. And therefore we read this at the time of Parsha of Bayahi in which it is emphasized that the beginning of the exile is in the descent to Egypt concludes and acts as the beginning of the eternal redemption similar to planting Zaro are alive which includes and acts as the beginning of the sprouting in an eternal way and may and we and we will yet greater appreciate the connection of his children are alive through the strength of the iron of the holiness which the destruction of the base of migdash through iron of negativity is the beginning of strength of iron of the future base of migdash since his children are alive and its completeness of the 12 tribes b'nai children of the four matriarchs whose acronym is barzel the realm of holiness not only in and they transformed the iron of the realm of negativity, which destroyed the base of Migdash, into the iron of a realm of holiness in the building of the future base of Migdash. In our generation, and especially in this year, all the above has gained an even greater value. Our generation is in the last generation of exile, and in itself the first generation of re redemption. As the notification and announcement of a revered father-in-law, the Rebbe leader of our generation, the Yosef of our generation, in correlation with the first Yosef, who notified and announced that Hashem will remember you and take you out of his land, to the land he has sworn to Avraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, that we have already completed all the efforts and service, that all the kets are already finished, and the tshuva was already done, and all we have, and we have already finished all the preparations, and in a matter of immense preparation, everything is prepared for the meal, and the time to come, the Leviathan, wild ox, and guarded wine, and with great emphasis this year, this year is especially connection to the kets of the redemption of the redemption for all the kets who are already finished. 5752 Hey Tav Shin Nun base acronym for the Hebrew word meaning it will be the year of wonders in it. Bakol Mikol Kol and everything, which refers to the true and complete redemption through Mashiach, just as the day you left Egypt, I will show them wonders, which then all matters. Bakol Mikol Kol will be in a matter of wonders.
Moreover, mainly, but call me, call, call, in the level of the forefathers who Hashem gave a taste of the world to come, and the ultimate perfection of this for the forefathers of all the Jewish people, and the automatic, and automatically also for each and every Jew and Jewish, where there be a time to come when the three forefathers arise, and together with them the four matriarchs, and the four matriarchs, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, and the four mothers of the twelve tribes, Bilah, Rachel, Zippah, and Leah, and on the contrary, the female will transcend the male, and the woman of the Lord is the crown of her husband, as emphasized in the order of the four mothers in the acronym Barzel, and together with them the Jewish people of all the generations arise and sing, those who dwell in the earth, and most certainly all the Jewish people in our generation, living souls and living bodies with no interruption, have forbidden life at all. And the leader of our generation, our head, and all come to one holy land, land of wheat and barley and grapes and figs and pomegranates, a land of oil, olives and dates and honey, a land whose rocks are iron and within itself to Jerusalem, the holy city, and the third base of Migdash, which there will be a completeness of iron of holiness. And therefore, in our generation in this year, it is exceedingly and mainly emphasized the strength seen in the emphasis of the intent and goal of the redemption, which is the beginning of time of exile, and most certainly after the completeness of our efforts, of our service, of the entire duration of exile, and literally immediately the eternal redemption and eternal base of Migdash will come in actuality in a revealed way, which then we will, with, with them, which then we will see, instead of the siege of Jerusalem, there will be an ultimate broadening of Jerusalem. It will be a raising up and it will be a settling in its place, meaning it will become longer and wider to the extent that Jerusalem will be settled with no walls beyond the limits of walls, being that Jerusalem is destined to spread to the whole Eretz Yisrael, and Eretz Yisrael will spread to the whole world. And instead of the iron being negative, which is related to the destruction of the base of Migdash, the perfection of iron of holiness is accomplished by the building of the third base of Migdash. Based on this, we have a clear understanding also of the lesson of the and empowerment that we take from the Parshish Vayechi regarding literal action, his children are alive, additional strength in one's thought, speech, and action, and everlasting strength in the planting in, of matters of Torah and mitzvah, which bring immediately the sprouting of the redemption regarding the effect of his children, alluding or adding strength in the education of boys and girls, including also you shall teach your sons. This refers to students in a strong and eternal fashion, which concludes, which continues also once the action of the father and the teacher, the educator ceases, who continues to be occupied in other matters for long and good days and years since the education is done in the matter of planting, which includes and actually brings the continuation of sprouting of all of his children, his children's children, for all generations to come. These children are alive, which in this is clear, evident, and strong, the eternal life of the educator, he is alive. And likewise, regarding each and every accomplishment of his, which is referred to as planting, that each that every individual effect, a single action, a single word, and a single thought is done with a strength of eternity of planting, which includes and brings in actuality the continuation of the sprouting of numerous good deeds, their fruits and fruits of fruits of fruits forever, which therefore also when doing the action ceases in accordance with Torah, both the cease of the action by doing another action as well as the interval of the rest in order to gain strength for the continuation of the action afterward during one sleep when the soul goes up above to draw life for itself which then there is an involuntary cease in action speech and even thought yet it is a matter of sorrow his action is alive namely it is not a one-time action which concludes upon finishing the action rather a living action in continuous way including an eternal way being. It is an action of planting which produces fruit and fruit and fruits of fruits with no end, which is, which in this, the eternal strength of his life, he is alive, is clearly evident in every single action that is done during his life. And this is accomplished through the revealing, the aspect of Yaakov and Yaakov lived, that is in, the, that is in him, Yud Ikev which the Yud alludes to the essence of Dot of Judaism, the essence of the soul, for instance, for, since it is a portion of Hashem from high, from up high, literally it has the Yud of the name Havaya, which is the acronym of the whole name. And it is drawn and permeates his entire existence till his Akev heel, which therefore the strength of the entirety 
of the essence of the soul is recognized in every single action, namely that it is the matter of planting, which through it the everlasting sprouting is achieved. And furthermore, this is the main thing that the planting which is in the one action accomplishes and brings the sprouting of the redemption as the ruling of the Rambam that through one mitzvah, one action, one speech, and one thought, he dipped the scale for himself and the entire world to the side of merit that caused him, the, them, him and them salvation, which then there will be an eternal life in the literal sense for every for each and every Jew, beginning with the Jewish people of our generation, souls and bodies for long days and good years, not only 147 as the years of life of Yaakov and not only 180 as the years of Yitzhak, rather eternal life. And likewise regarding the Jewish people throughout the previous generation, since arise and sing those who dwell in the dust and regarding the Jewish people in all the coming generations forever. And may it be the will of Hashem that the decisions alone regarding adding one mitzvah in a matter of planting even before actually fulfilling should be the planting that will bring the sprouting of the redemption in a literal sense and literally immediately on this very holy Shabbos, Shabbos Hazah of the first book of the Torah which concludes the strength for all the five Chumashas and the 24 holy books including the end of Divrei Hayomim with the uh, and ascend, the ascend from exile to redemption to the extent that before the Torah reading of Mincha, and these are the names of the son of Yisrael, Yaakov, who came to Egypt, Reuben and Shimon leave Egypt, transpires, and all twelve tribes, the forefathers and the matriarchs, and Moshe and Aaron with them, and the leader of our generation, and the Yosef our generation, who did not die like Yaakov, our, our forefather, this is the progeny of Yaakov, Yosef, as known that the Nasi, leader in the acronym of, of the Hebrew word, meaning the spark of Yaakov of our forefather, and through binding and having subservience to the leader of our generation, this is drawn to each and every male and female of the generation. And simply and literally, immediately, Hashem will, Yosef, add once a, a, once a again the issue, his strength, by ace, and gather the the scattered of the Jewish people and the dispersed of Yehuda, he will gather from one corner, from the four corners of the world, with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters. For he, Hashem himself, literally holds on to each person from his place. As the verse says, and you will be collected one by one, O Jewish people, and return all of them, and returns with them. And Hashem, your God, will return with you, your captives. He inscribed a redemption for himself that he will return with them, together with all the synagogues, study halls, and houses of kind deeds, with all the books and manuscripts in the areas outside Eretz Israel, beginning with the synagogue and study hall of my revered father-in-law, the Rebbe, leader of our generation, which we, not, which we are now in literally the house of our Rebbe in the diaspora, as well as the personal home of each and every Jew that have literally become houses of Torah, prayer, and kind deeds, and their silver and their gold with them, to our holy land, to Yushalayim, the holy city, and to the third base of Migdash. And each and every person shows with his finger and says, Here he is Mashiach. Here is Mashiach. Here is my revered father-in-law, the Rebbe leader of our generation. Behold, this is our God, this is Hashem, and here is the Latin table prepared for the meal of the Leviathan, wild ox and guard wine, which at its conclusion, King Mashiach referred to as David says, I will bless it and it will be, it, and it is befitting for me to bless. And starting with the feast of Motzi Shabbos Kodesh, in addition to the meal, wine and cake of the Febrang of the day of Shabbos, which is a forecase and similar to the day that is all Shabbos and rest for life everlasting, the meal of King Mashiach referred to as Davin, and especially that the first day of the week is the 15th day of the month, the moon of the, fir of the month of Tevis is complete, which most certainly will be celebrated in a magnificent manner, moreover. And this is the main thing that it will be celebrated together with King Mashiach, referred to as David at our head, being that even before this, on the holy Shabbos, we come with the clouds of, sky, clouds of the sky to our holy land, to Yerushalayim, the holy city, to the holy mountain, to the base of Mingdash, and to the holy of holies. Malmesh, literally, immediately. Thank you for watching our class. Zai Gezun, Have a great week.